Okay, assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video, we are going to start with the physics paper 9702 P1. The paper is going to be held on 18th of November, which is almost five days left in the exam. And for the any queries regarding the examination, we have just created a video about the, some of the easy and tricky questions. As you all know that examination uh, uh, is, uh, is a paper of 40 MCQs and 40 marks. Time limit 1 hour 15 minutes and we do have almost 60 to 70 percent paper why you can say that is comfortable for many of the students but still 30 to 40 percent is going to be difficult so difficult uh, part should be left behind but the, the mistake that can be done easily in the easy question because in easy question many students think that they are easy so they, they, uh, they go quickly on the hard question for that, we are just going to create a video about the, some, some of the easy and tricky questions because in this question, we are just going to face some of the questions that do look like easy but still we have to do something in that question Okay, here we go with the question number 1 How many cubic nanometer are there in cubic micrometer? Okay, as you all know that in nanometer we do have a 10 exponential minus 9 as its power whereas we are going with the 10 exponential minus 6 Okay and for that, we all know that minus 9 to the minus 6 would be plus 3. Okay, plus 3 would be quite compatible with that. So it could be answered very much quickly about the question number A. But then it's a wrong approach. A reason that's why it's a wrong approach because in the question they have already been stated clearly about the meter cube. The meter cube clearly states that in this question we are going to with the cubic term. Cubic term means for example, the approach of plus 3 would be right, but for the cubic meter, we are going to with the like the meter q to for that. For example, is a exponential 3 plus exponential 3. Same for that, that's nano, that is micro, and this is nano. Okay. Exponential 3 plus 3 would be made in the sorry into 3. Would you make it the 9 exponential 9? So it would turn answer would be 9 okay, because of the cubic term that is used in this question. If there it was only the meter one, if only it was a meter one, so the answer A would be right. But for the cubic ones, we are going with the option number C, and it is the right approach. Okay. And now for question number two, we are asked with the what is the horizontal component of the force shown. That is much quite easy for that. Because we just need to remember about the f equals to f f equals to f cos theta and f f is basically the horizontal component of that following force that's given to us, which is the 20 newton. Okay? So 20 is, should be written over there. Okay? And for the cos 53 written over there. So we are getting the 12 point something newton answer. So A is a Right answer in this question. Okay. And the most pretty question of the winter 17 question paper uh, 13, 1, 3. About the question number 5. Okay. Four possible sources of error in a series of major measurements are listed. Okay. They have given this with the measurement about some of the meters. And we have just to given the answer about what is a random error and what is a systematic error. Okay. For question number 1. Sorry for the. Option number one, we do have an analog meter whose scale is read fr from as job is read from different angles. It means the meter is placed on one plate and we are just going to read it from the different angles. So reading from different angles is not of the systematic error. It will be random error and random error is just caused by the human error. So we are considering one as a part with the random error. Okay. Now moving towards the option number two. A meter which always measured 5% too high. 5% too high means that a meter which do have a rent systematic error. Okay. It shows that there is a systematic error in this meter because there is nothing else written which could be said that about the mistake of any human. So it could be considered as a systematic error. Okay. Moving towards the third option. It states that a meter with a needle that is not frictionless. So the, so the needle sometimes sticks slightly, okay? And it's, it's, uh, uh, after reading it twice and thrice, we came to know that it's a mistake of any human. 
So according to us, it will be a human error, so random error. Now, fourth one is quite confusing option. The option states that a meter with a zero error. A meter with a zero error means that is not the zero error, that there is no error. It does not show that is no error. Many could say that the zero error means that it is saying that there is no error in this meter, but it is not like it is a zero error. Zero error is like of the in the Bernie caliper in the magnetometer screw cause. These instruments do have a zero error in that. So it would be considered as a systematic error. Okay. Now two and four going with the systematic error and one and three going with the random error. So option B is the most appropriate option in this question. And that is the right option as well. Okay. So just reading it very much thoroughly, each and each word or letter is very much important in the MCQ, especially because in physics we do have a more time than other paper one of the few minutes with respect to the biology and chemistry examination in which we do have only one hour for the MCUs. Okay. Other thing as well that we are just solving with the winter 17. Okay. So better to go approach with the 16 till 18 paper. Okay. For a print paper, go for the 20 paper because for the if you have any chance that in your examination we do we can have a question that is similarly to the question that is in the uh, recent past papers so basically you should go with the 16 18 and for the trending how the trend comes so go for the 20 examination and that's it for the video okay till now